Good morning. We're going to continue with habit six. We are on page 267 from our book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. I want to thank you for letting me read to you this morning. Thank you. Synergy in business. I enjoyed one particularly meaningful synergistic experience as I worked with my associates to create the corporate mission statement for our business. Almost all members of the company went high up into the mountains where, surrounded by the magnificence of nature, we began with the first draft of what some of us considered to be an excellent mission statement. At first, the communication was respectful, careful, and predictable. But as we began to talk about the various alternatives, possibilities, and opportunities ahead, people became very open and authentic and simply started to think out loud. The mission statement agenda gave way to a collective free association a spontaneous piggybacking of ideas. People were genuinely empathetic, or empathic, as well as courageous, and we moved from mutual respect and understanding to creative synergy, to creative synergistic communication. Everyone could sense it. It was exciting. As it matured, we returned to the task of putting the evolved collective vision into words, each of which contains specific and committed to meaning for each participant. The resulting corporate mission statement reads, Our mission is to empower people and organizations to get to significantly increase their performance capability in order to achieve worthwhile purposes through understanding and living principle-centered leadership. The synergistic process that led to the creation of our mission statement engraved it in the hearts and minds of everyone there, and it has served us well as a frame of reference for what we are about as well as what we are not about. Another high level synergy experience took place when I accepted an invitation to serve as the resource and discussion catalyst at the annual planning meeting of a large insurance company. Several months ahead, I met with the committee responsible to prepare for and stage the two day meeting which was to involve all the top executives. They informed me that the traditional pattern was to identify four or five major issues through questionnaires and interviews and to have alternative proposals presented by the executives. Past meetings had been generally respectful exchanges occasionally deteriorating into defensive win-lose ego battles. They were usually predictable, uncreative, and boring. As I talked with the committee members about the power of synergy, they could sense its potential. With considerable trepidation, they agreed to change the pattern. They requested various executives to prepare anonymous white papers on each of the high priority issues and then asked all the executives to immerse themselves in these papers ahead of time in order to understand the issues and the differing points of view. They were to come to the meeting prepared to listen rather than to present prepared to create and synergize rather than to defend and protect. We spent the first half day in the meeting teaching the principles and practicing the skills of habit, habits four, five, and six. 
The rest of the time was spent in creative synergy. The release of creative energy was incredible. Excitement replaced boredom. People became very open to each other's influence and generated new insights and options. By the end of the meeting, an entirely new understanding of the nature of the Central Company Challenge evolved. The white paper proposals became obsolete. Differences were valued and transcended. A new common vision began to form. Oh, there comes that sun. Once people have experienced real synergy, they are never quite the same again. They know the possibility of having other such mind-expanding adventures in the future. Often attempts are made to recreate a particular synergistic experience, but this seldom can be done. However, the essential experience, okay, the essential purpose behind creative work can be recaptured. Like the Far Eastern philosophy, we seek not to imitate the masters, rather we seek what they sought. We seek not to imitate past creative synergistic experiences, rather we seek new ones around new and different and sometimes higher purposes. Oh, it's beautiful out here. And the next little section is synergy and communication. I hope you can see the birds on the water. It's making it a lot prettier for me. Synergy is exciting. Creativity is exciting. It's phenomenal that openness and communication can produce the possibilities of truly significant gain, a significant improvement are so real that it's worth the risk such openness entails. After World War II, the United States commissioned David Lilienthal to head the new Atomic Energy Commission. Lilienthal brought together a group of people who were highly influential celebrities in their own right, disciples. As it were, if their own t frames, as, as it were of their own frames of reference. This very diverse group of individuals had an extremely heavy agenda and they were impatient to get at it. In addition, the press was pushing them but Lilenthal took several weeks to create a high emotional bank account. He had these people get to know each other, their interests, their hopes, their goals, their concerns, their backgrounds, their frames of reference, their paradigms. He facilitated the kind of human interaction that creates a great bonding between people. And he was heavily criticized for taking the time to do it because it wasn't efficient. But the net result was that his group became closely knit together, very open with each other, very creative and synergistic. The respect among the members of the commission was so high that if there was disagreement, instead of opposition and defense, there was a genuine effort to understand. The attitude was, if a person of your intelligence and competence and commitment disagrees with me, then there must be something to your disagreement that I don't understand and I need to understand it. You have a perspective, a frame of reference I need to look at. Non-protective interaction developed and an unusual culture was born. The following diagram illustrates how closely trust is related to different levels of communication. All right, you know how this goes. I'm going to try to show you a book. There we go. Uh, a 
know that's not clear. But okay, let's try this. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we go back to the beautiful. There we go. Okay. The lowest level of communication coming out of low trust situations would be characterized by defensiveness, protectiveness, and often legalistic language, which covers all the bases and spells out qualifiers and the escape clauses in the event things go sour. Such communication produces only win-lose or lose-lose. It isn't effective, there's no P slash PC balance, and it creates further reasons to defend and protect. The middle position is respectful communication. This is a level where fairly mature people interact. They have respect for each other, but they want to avoid the possibility of ugly confrontations. So they communicate politely, but not empathetically. Empathetically, empathically, yeah. They might understand each other intellectually, but they really don't deeply look at the paradigms and assumptions underlying their own positions and become open to new possibilities. Beautiful. Respectful communication works in independent situations and even in interdependent situations, but the creative possibilities are not opened up. In interdependent situations, compromise is the position usually taken. Compromise means that one plus one equals one and a half. Both give and take. The communication isn't defensive or protective or angry or manipulative. It is honest and genuine and respectful, but it isn't creative or synergistic. It produces a low form of win-win. Synergy means that one plus one may equal eight, 16, or even 1600. The synergistic position of high trust produces solutions better than any originally proposed, and all parties know it. Furthermore, they genuinely enjoy the creative enterprise. A mini culture is formed to satisfy in and of itself. Even if it is short-lived, the peace slash PC balance is there. There are some circumstances in which synergy may not be achievable and no deal isn't viable. But even in these circumstances, the spirit of sincere trying will usually result in a more effective compromise. The next, fishing for the third alternative. To get a better idea of how our level of communication affects our interdependent effectiveness, envision the following scenario. It's vacation time, and a husband wants to take his family out to the lake country to enjoy camping and fishing. This is important to him. He's been planning it all year. He's made reservations at a cottage on the lake and arranged to rent a boat. And his sons are really excited about going. His wife, however, wants to use the vacation time to visit her ailing mother, some 250 miles away. She doesn't have the opportunity to see her very often. And this is important to her. Their difference could be the cause of a major negative experience. The plans are set. The boys are excited. We should go on the fishing trip, he says. 
but we don't know how much longer my mother will be around, and I want to be by her, she replies. This is our only opportunity to have enough time to do that. All year long, we've looked forward to this one week vacation. The boys would be miserable sitting around grandmother's house for a week. They would drive everybody crazy. Besides, your mother's not that sick and she has your sister less than a mile away to take care of her. She is my mother too. I want to be with her. Well, you could phone her every night and we're planning to spend time with her at the Christmas family reunion, remember? That's not for five more months. We don't even know if she'll still be here by then. Besides, she needs me and she wants me. She's being well taken care of. Besides, the boys and I need you too. My mother is more important than fishing. Your husband and sons are more important than your mother. As they disagree, back and forth, they finally may come up with some kind of compromise. They may decide to split up. He takes the boys fishing at the lake while she visits her mother. And they both feel guilty and unhappy. The boys sense it, and it affects their enjoyment of the vacation. The husband may give in to his wife, but he does it grudgingly. And consciously or unconsciously, he produces evidence to fulfill his prophecy of how miserable the week will be for everyone. The wife may give in to her husband, but she's withdrawn and overreactive to any new developments in her mother's health situation. If her mother were to become seriously ill and die, the husband could never forgive himself, and she couldn't forgive him either. The dogs are snoring, and Zorro is getting wild with it. So I'm not sure if it's being picked up in here or not, but that's my boy snoring while I read. <laughs> okay. Whatever compromise they finally agree on, it could be rehearsed over the years as evidence of insensitivity, <coughs> excuse me, neglect, or a bad priority decision on either part. It could be a source of contention for years and could even polarize the family. Many marriages that once were beautiful and soft and spontaneous and loving have deteriorated to the level of a hostility through a series of incidents just like this. The husband and wife see the situation differently and that difference can polarize them, separate them, create wedges in the relationship or it can bring them closer together on a higher level if they have cultivated the habits of effective interdependence. They approach their differences from an entirely different paradigm. Their communication is on higher ground. Because they have a high emotional bank account, they have trust and open communication in their marriage. Because they think win-win, they believe in a third alternative, a solution that is mutually beneficial and is better than what either of them originally proposed. Because they listen empathically and seek first to understand, they create within themselves and between them a comprehensive picture of the values and concerns that need to be taken into account in making a decision. And the combination of those ingredients, the high emotional bank account, thinking win-win, and seeking first to understand, creates the ideal environment for synergy. Buddhism calls this the middle way. Middle in this sense does not mean compromise. It means higher 
like the apex of the triangle in searching for the middle or higher way this husband and wife realize that their love their relationship is part of their synergy as they communicate the husband really deeply feels his wife's desire her need to be with her mother he understands how she wants to re wants to relieve her sister who has who has had the primary responsibility for their mother's care he understands that they really don't know how long she will be with them and that she certainly is more important than fishing and the wife deeply understand her husband's desire to have the family together and to provide a great experience for the boys she realizes the investment that has been made in lessons and equipment to prepare for this fishing vacation and she feels the equipment to prepare oops and she feels the importance of creating good memories with them so they pull their desires and they're not on opposite sides of the problem they're together on one side looking at the problem understanding the needs and working to create a third alternative that will meet them maybe we could arrange another time within the month for you to visit with your mother he suggests i could take over the home responsibilities for the weekend and arrange for some help at the first of the week so that you could go i know it's important to you to have that time or maybe we could locate a place to camp and fish that would be close to your mother the area wouldn't be as nice but we could oops, hang on. but we could still be outdoors and meet others needs as well and the boys wouldn't be climbing the walls we could even plan some recreational activities with the cousins aunts and uncles which would be an added benefit they synergize they communicate back and forth until they come up with a solution they both feel good about it's better than the solutions either of them originally proposed it's better than compromise it's a synergistic solution that builds p and pc instead of a transaction it's a transformation they get what they both really want and build their relationship in the process. All right, I'm going to stop there. We are on page 274. And the next part will be negative synergy. And I think that will finish off. Let me look at that. Yeah, that's about eight or nine pages. And then we'll be done with um, habit six. And then we have habit seven. We are almost done, my friends. Thank you for being with me. You know I appreciate you.